I have literally wound over a mile worth of wire to make these coils for jump rings, but now I have to cut them all. <laughs> this looks like the kind of job for a jig. I recently saw this assembly that has a drill chuck on one side and a mandrel on the other, and the mandrel takes the 16 millimeter inner diameter and 63 millimeter outer diameter blades, which are real cheap and real thin, and I was thinking that would be great for the core of a jig. So I bought that. Now, I have some ideas in my head, but I actually haven't designed it yet, so I'm gonna go through and take you along as I try to figure out a good jump ring cutter using this assembly. So the way that this works is you can either do it with a chuck, I've also got this adapter for a belt, then you have a block that you put bearings into, and then the jeweler saw slips onto the end. Now it's time to move on and mount this to the material that we'll be making the jig out of. Now I do wanna future-proof myself a little bit. I may wanna use liquid cooling for cutting the jump rings in the future, so instead of plywood, which I normally use for jigs, I'm gonna use this HDPE plastic. All I'm gonna do out of the HDPE is cut four pieces to essentially make an open-ended box, so that way the cutter can slide into it and mount to the bottom of the top. So the box worked out good, but there is one issue that I wasn't quite expecting, and that's the holders for the blade. It doesn't fit in. There's not enough clearance between it and the top of the box to let it slide in. So I'm gonna take this apart, take it over the router, and then just route a little channel in there so these will slip all the way on. Now that I'm back on track, what I need to do is just cut a little slit in here where the jeweler saw can fit up. And then after I have that in there, what I wanna do is cut a little V channel on the router so that the blade is right there centered and then I can feed the coils through that and it'll keep them on track as they're getting cut. Now, instead of just freehand sliding this through to cut it, I wanna give a little bit more confinement. So I cut up a 50 by 50 millimeter block and then I also ran a groove down there with the same bit since I was set up and that way, if I mount this block on top of here with the proper gap, then I can just feed through the coils and it should help it not fly off to the side. I need to power the cutter somehow and I'm a pretty lazy guy, so I just wanna reuse what I already have. I made this winding jig before and it works super well. And so my thought is, instead of having to take out the drill and use that, if I could just mount this sled onto the track, then I could use that to power the cutter off to the side. I've got the jig all set up for the cutting. It's in place. I have the block set up. I clamped it and the drill guide down. So now what I'm gonna to use to hook these two together, I could rigidly mount it, but I don't wanna take all of the vibrations from the drill and put it over here. So I've got one of these flexible couplers and then I'm just gonna use a 1 4th inch. It's got the quick connect on the one end. And then I can slide that into the two chucks to couple them together. Now I just need to power this up and test it out. All right, there's a couple of problems with this design. The main thing that I saw is that the rings are getting jammed in there. They're not pushing out the other side and so then they get chewed up and it broke my blade. Also one like slipped underneath. I think there's just too much tension and pressure once it's broken and free. So what I did, I designed up a new plate, uh, 3D printed, so that now there's this slot cut to let it just fall out of the way. And then the same thing with this, at that center mark, it opens up and shouldn't jam them in there so much. So I'm gonna try to modify these ones as well, but I did the 3D printing and then just let that go. Um, and so overnight, I was able to print this. Also, one thing I realized is this was like a buck 50. I could probably print the whole thing for like $5 of plastic. That's a lot less than $30. So probably 3D printing was the way that I should have gone in the first place. First batch of rings, and they look really nice. The edges are pretty smooth, so that's cool. There's just a teeny little burr, but way better than when you clip them with the clippers. 
Now there was a couple of issues that I found out. First off, rings were flying up and hitting me in the face. Well, not quite the face, I'm being dramatic. But I need to add back in on the top here so they don't fly up. And then I'm also cutting the wrong direction. I meant to put this groove in the other side, but then I wasn't thinking that it mattered, but it does because I'm pushing against the blade the wrong direction. And so then it didn't hold into place and it fell apart. So I'm gonna have to reprint this and try again. I said in the future, I might wanna add some water cooling and that technically was yesterday. So today's the future and I wanna add water cooling onto this. So I already got a turkey pan and I put everything in there and I have this little 0.4 watt uh, fish pump and I'm gonna hook that up into the block. So I'll need to fill this up with water and then I'm just gonna use a drill that is slightly undersized of this 3 8 tubing and I'm gonna drill it at an angle into here, slide that in and then I should have some water cooling that'll help keep my blades nice and cool. Four to six weeks later. Well, it's only been a second for you. It's been over a month for me and I've been thinking about this project a ton. I've been super busy on business travel and family vacations and where we left off, there was a couple of issues. So with the big turkey pan, part of the problem is I got holes in it and I had to patch those up. And also it took over a gallon of coolant to go above the pump, which was kind of annoying to work with that much coolant. Uh, so that was one issue. Another thing is because the coolant I was using was just plain water, while I thought ahead and was using stainless steel bolts, the cutter assembly uh, is pretty cheap and it's not all stainless steel and so it was rusting. So water wasn't a good choice for the coolant. My bad on that one. Also, I had modified all of the plates on the top with these slots that I was thinking would help the rings come out. But really then, once they kind of got in the halfway point, the rings would just go all, all over the place. So that was a bad choice, I think, in the design. I don't think it worked like I thought it was going to. Now, I also had put the coolant so it was facing towards me. And I think what happened is that the coolant wasn't on the blade long enough, so the blade was getting too hot. And also it was pointed at me and getting me all wet. My blades, I believe, are also too small or too thin. Once I moved up to the 14 gauge steel, they were fine with the thinner steel. And I was running them too fast and I knew that, but I was getting better cutting when they were running fast, but then that made them get too hot and chip out the blades. So in version two, I'm gonna take care of all of those problems. So with version two here, I've decided to go pretty much purely 3D printed because I can get a lot of benefits and mostly it's in that this base part can be integrated with the portion that's lifting it up and the tub that has the coolant in it. You could definitely still build this by hand if you want, but having it integrated like this is gonna mean that I need a lot less coolant than I did before. I've also put the post portions where I'm holding up the plate it's angled at 10 degrees, so it should be easier to feed in the wire spools and then it'll fall in um, more directly. I also have put back so that the V-groove goes the whole way. I made this bin for it that has holes on the bottom and on the sides so that coolant can get out. And then this just comes in here so that when you are cutting the rings, they just can bounce off and hopefully will get collected before they're kind of flying all over the place. And then when you're done, you can take this out, the coolant will drain into here through the holes, and you can just dump in the rings. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? Oh yeah, for the coolant before how I think it wasn't on the blade for very long and it was spraying at me, I made a block that goes underneath, so it mounts underneath and it has a groove for the blade, so it should be for like around 30% of the blade is in a channel with the coolant, and then the coolant hopefully isn't gonna spray back at me, and it's not just pointed going straight out. It's actually up into the blade, and so it should do a lot better on the cooling with the coolant. Before I had these teeny little parts for the top to keep the rings in, um, I could have printed a part or cut it, 
but I'm actually gonna make one out of acrylic because I have some scrap acrylic just so I can see what's going on. Um, but definitely I could have printed that part like before. Now for the coolant, I bought some of this slugger cutting fluid. You mix it in like 10 to one with water and that should help me not get rust. And it also has better cooling properties being a proper cutting fluid. For the blades, I spent way too much money and bought a whole bunch of different types of blades, different thicknesses. I bought plain steel and tungsten carbide, and then also different tooth numbers. So hopefully I can get a feel for what really works best for cutting the steel uh, chainmail jump rings. I haven't tested this out yet. I'm pretty optimistic. So let's put this together and see how it works. What you think, what you think about? When you're born into a fire Let them burn, let them burn it out Sell them to the richest buyer They want to let the world decay They tell us lies and fade away, fade away We feel This turned out amazing. I am so excited about this. The bin turned out great. Uh, Everything fit together. I'm super, super happy with the whole jig. I'm not even quite sure what to say. I'm just happy that everything turned out. In fact, I was so excited with how well it went together that I already started using it and I've been using it a lot. And I mean thousands and thousands of rings a lot. I've tested thick steel and thin steel. I've tested copper and aluminum. I've tried different blades and all the things. So now I'm gonna go through about how it works, what I've learned, uh, cause it's been a couple of days and I've been going crazy making stuff and using this jig. I noticed using the jig that I was having torque issues, not quite get enough torque from my drill. So rigidly mounting it without having that adapter really helped. So you don't need that adapter that I talked about earlier. That coolant block that I have down in here for feeding with the little pump worked fantastic. Actually a lot better than I was expecting. I turned the pump up just a little bit and it got cutting fluid all the way around the blade and I could tweak that so it wouldn't splash everywhere but would be fully over the blade and it kept it nice and cool. I could cut a couple of full coils of rings and then touch it with my finger and it was perfectly cool every time. So coolant, definitely awesome. And I would actually say you should use the coolant. Whether I was cutting steel, copper, or aluminum, all the cuts came out better when I was using the cutting fluid. Talking about the cutting quality, the blades, I tested out all those different variations. More teeth did produce cleaner cuts, but not that much cleaner versus 128 and 72 teeth. And then the high speed steel versus the tungsten carbide, the tungsten carbide, I didn't wear out either of them, so I'm not sure on longevity. I need to do more tests, uh, use it longer. Now, I will say when I was doing the testing, really trying to push it through its paces, I was running it faster and I was pushing hard and I did break a tungsten carbide blade because it's more brittle. I think you should use high speed steel until you're comfortable with the jig. Then you can switch over to using the tungsten carbide which in theory should last much longer. Different materials are gonna need different speeds. I found that my drill would go down at 250 RPM when I measured it with the tachometer, and that was the slowest it could go without losing torque. And that seemed to work fine when I was doing that 14 gauge steel or even the 17 gauge steel. Now when I went to copper, I could speed up to around 400 RPM. And then with aluminum, I could cut really fast and really push them through. For tightening down the pressure plate, what worked well is to have it fully loosened up at first, put in a, the coil in the top and the bottom. I would just loop it around the same coil and then tightening it down so that each one just had a little bit of play. That was the proper amount of tension for the coils to be able to feed it through and have it hold nice and in place. Now the piece of information you're probably really wondering is how fast can you cut with this? Now in 14 gauge steel, you can cut about twice as fast as with the clippers, or at least that's my speed. Now you might think that that's not that much faster in steel, but I will tell you, it's hard for me to keep up fast cutting through multiple coils of wire. My hand starts to get tired and 
Yeah, so it's twice as fast, but I was able to sit here and cut, uh, I think I cut eight coils in a row and my back was a little stiff because I was sitting there for a little while. There's no way I could get through eight coils without my hand starting to hurt me. So, twice as fast, good. Copper, on the other hand, it takes me the same time to cut copper as it does steel, but in here, copper, I can cut 10 times as fast. Then aluminum, it's so fast, I can cut an entire four foot coil in like 25 or 30 seconds. Super, super fast. And on top of that, the cuts are nicer. To me, it's really more about the cuts. Even if it was the same speed, the cuts really are beautiful. If you wanna print this, I have the STLs for free on my website, so you can go and check those out and make one for yourself. If you don't have a 3D printer or you just wanna build this by hand, I have some plans for sale on Etsy and also on my website, so check those out in the description. Also, I'm gonna add these plans on with the cutter so you get both of them because you're really gonna want both of those. I don't think it makes sense to have just a cutter and not to make the coil. So that'll be all together in one pack, so better value for you. Make sure to check out the video where I made the winding jig that I used for all the coils that I cut in this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss when I use all these rings to make a chainmail hover. Thanks so much for watching and take care.